RV parks have a 10 o'clock rule, right? No generators and no loud music after 10 o'clock. Nine o'clock, so I guess we're okay until ten o'clock. That's a fire. Look how nice that is. Wow. I like the way it feels on my feet. It's hot here, but it doesn't it feels comfortable. Yeah, like I the warmth. I like the warmth. My feet were cold inside. That air conditioner is so cold. But it feels good out here. I was gonna put socks on. See? Yeah. So this is different for me because like from here, like I'm thinking, okay, well, how many days and I'll be here and then I go home. But that's not the case because in this case, I'm full timing. Mm -hmm. So it's like we have to figure out where to next, right? No, we don't figure that out. We, we figure out a, that out as we go. All right. That's why it's so right. different. Mm -hmm. We're going out to explore. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically traveling is exploring on your way. Yeah, there. but this is why it's different for me because usually when I'm traveling, it's like, okay, I'm going to be in this place for a certain amount of time and then I go to the next thing already planned and then I go home. But now it's like we can do whatever we want. Like the world is like out there for us yeah. to look at. So what do we do? Where do we go? What do we want to see? It's beautiful. Like, do we want to see anything in Alabama? That's the next date out. We might. I don't know. When we head out of here, we'll be in Alabama. Yeah. Because we're so close to the border right now. Yeah. We're really close. Did you know we were close to Alabama? Yeah, you mentioned that to me this morning. I've got like no cell phone service out here. And we get about 15 minutes of so, Wi-Fi out here. That shouldn't, that shouldn't be even considered Wi-Fi. That should be called like 15 minutes of email. Right? That's not yeah. even considered Wi-Fi. You Wi -Fi. can't even write a real good email in 15 minutes. I know. He can't even text his sister at all. I, there's no way I can read my email in 15 minutes. <laughs> you know how much email I get? Yeah, That's yeah. a big fire we're getting. Put a couple of them sticks on there, like real easy, so it stays in a pyramid. Look at how big that is. Wow. Yep, real easy. No, real easy. Sorry. <laughs> I do it to the exact opposite side so it balances it out. Be careful, step away. That's a nice yeah, fire. Robert likes to sit by the campfire, see? You guys, the fun's just beginning. Yeah. Yep. Our first, this is our uh, this is officially like our first full timing day because yep. we haven't really been doing other than projects and stuff. Getting ready it's like we've been getting ready for full timing. We haven't really we and and today was the first fun. day that we actually are using the solar yep. for actual living, is what I want to say. Yep. Actual living with the solar today. That's what we're doing. We finally get to start having fun, you guys. Because it's there's a lot, there's the a time. lot to learn with the solar stuff. It's a lot to learn with solar that I didn't know about. Some of my outlets for cooking now are set to solar. And I'm using the electric elements when I'm in an RV park. So when I'm cooking, there's some outlets that are solar. There's some outlets that are not solar. So when I'm cooking with the electric, I got to be hooked up to that with an extension cord. So it's a little confusing because we're still not sure which are the outlets. I'm so, I'm not sure which are the outlets yet. I'm still learning. Which are the outlets that are for solar? Which are the outlets that are for shore power? Right now, I'm pretty sure that this plug, which was the refrigerator plug, is for the electric. And then there are some plugs that are for solar. And for me, I'm still trying to get used to That's the hard part is which of the hookups are for solar and which of the hookups are for electric. So he made it that way because we, we uh, before I used to just do camping on the um, 
parks, but now we're going to be doing mostly boon docking and just like maybe once or twice a week we'll go to a park, a cheap park, and just take showers and stuff like that because we don't have a big a water tank. Our water tank is only about 34 gallons, so that's a problem for three people. We don't store a lot of water. So um, that's becoming an issue because we have a light trailer, so the, the gallons are a lot less than if you were having a regular trailer. As far as the solar is concerned, I'm still confused and, and worrying and thinking about it and I'm checking the monitors. So there's a lot to learn about the solar, about monitoring your batteries and stuff like that and the different hookups. But we made it this way so that we don't really have to go to a park. We want to be self-sufficient and be off the grid. This is what I wanted and I wanted a rig. I mean, I have a house that's on the grid. So I wanted an RV that was off the grid. So there is always a right time for everything we tell ourselves as we go through the motions of life and ride the hamster wheel we so depend on. Everything we dream for sits on the back burner waiting for its day. This is my time. My dream is here. To see all these things I glimpse at from the computer screen. Today is my time to live and enjoy it. In between all the things going on in my life, I had to say it is now and I'm doing this now, no matter what. And as I think all this, my fears rise up and I remember life on the road is living by faith with no certainties or directions. It is only a moment in time that will eventually run out for all of us. Hey guys, we are now an off-grid, self-reliant RV. Subscribe to watch us on the road as we put this RV to the self-sustainable test. Don't forget to thumbs up if you enjoy the efforts we are putting out. As always, thanks for watching.